Hi, this is going to be a short quick start video for the Pixel Render toolset. I'll briefly go over on how to get started with these tools, so let's jump right into it. First, let's make sure to open the RAW file contained in the package and uh, unpack the files that are in the OTL folder into your OTL folder in your Houdini documents direction. This should mostly be found under this location on your computer. After that we can uh, open Houdini and the files should be uh, registered by Houdini. But first let's save the file to so maybe somewhere on your desktop and rename it. Okay. Then we can create a geometry container and dive inside and check if the, if the tools are available by writing down pixel for example. And there you see those are the three tools that come with the package which is one uh, the pixel render, let's rename that. Then we have the pixel material. And then there is the pixel point light. Let's just use the pixel render for now. For that, I'd like to add the pick hat and uh, plug this one into the geometry slot. And as you can see, right now you don't see any colors. This is because the geometry doesn't contain any colors. It contains a material. But if we want to see something, then we have to add a color. And with this color, we can also uh, we can choose the color of a liking. And you will see that you will be greeted with the lit uh, pixel render. So currently, this is using the built-in camera. If we um, hover over the pixel render and go to the camera outline, you will see that there's a built-in camera where you can change uh, where you can change quite a bunch of uh, things. You can change the resolution, the zoom, rotation, everything. This is so you just uh, that you can basically start right off uh, without having to have a custom camera. We can also use a custom camera by going outside of the sub context and creating a Houdini camera by tapping in camera. And essentially, the camera needs to be an autogra uh, orthographic camera, and you can choose that by going to the View tab and changing this one to orthographic. The resolution of the camera will also be your final pixel resolution, so it's advised to put it a bit lower, maybe 128 by 128. So if we dive back in and go to the pixel renderer and select Custom Camera, then we can go to the object context and look there's our camera and choose this one. So you will see that the camera is pointing away from the object right now. We can go back and select the camera and then select the handle and this one to push the camera back. Then we can see it renders from the front. What you can also do is look right through the camera to uh, get a better view of uh, what is actually there. And uh, you can also lock the camera to then zoom out and orbit around your object. Maybe let's try to pick something a bit farther away. Yeah, maybe something like this. So let's start working a bit on the scene. For that we can unlock the camera again and go outside of the camera. And sometimes it will be that the orthographic view will be persistent so you can change the view to top view for example and then back to perspective viewport and if you press F you can focus back on the scene and start working on the scene. So what we could for example do is we could add a ground plane by using a grid and we could merge these two together and then plug the result in here and they can see the grid is maybe a bit too high so we can push it down and it will update it. And we can also give the grid a color. Not the same, but maybe red. Now we can actually uh, change the lighting a bit around. If you go to the light tab and if you go to the direction light, which is the light that you're seeing at the moment, you can change the rotation of the light and there's also a setting if you don't want the shadows to be casted you can turn off ray tracing then you will only get like the surface shadowing. 
Then we can also play around with the lights and with the shadows, which determine the intensity. There's two different modes uh, when it comes to the lighting. Um, there's realistic, which tries to apply a more realistic behavior to how the colors are being added. And then there is the stylized one. And the stylized one lets you basically add the color directly to it. So your shadow color can also be something lighter. These sliders in stylized mode will then allow you to blend these in and out. We can also go over our silhouette uh, or our outlines essentially. There's three types of outlines. The one is the silhouette. If I only enable the silhouette, then you will see anything where there is alpha transparency, like here, there will be a outline cast. You can also turn on contour, which takes the contour of your object and adds an outline to this one. And here you can also change how the how the colors are being mapped. Essentially, you can choose a solid color or you can play around with the hues of the color, the saturation. We could also try out using the pixel point light. For that we can search for it and type the pixel point light here. Essentially when you select it and press this handle in the viewport you will be greeted with this uh, gizmo which is the position of your light. So we can, for example, put this on top of it. And in order for the scene to be affected, the point light needs to be plugged in into the second input. Let's make the scene a bit darker by reducing the light color. Such as this. Now you can see that we have the point light here, which has some different settings. You can change the strength of the point light, the uh, radius, and uh, the size. The size is uh, something more specific. For example, if this point light would be in the object itself, then it uh, does not. the scene does not receive any light. But if you change the size of the light, it basically acts uh, as a, a size from where um, the surface can still see the light essentially. We could try out some materials now. Um, for that I created a small little backdrop which has some UVs uh, on it. And let's start by first assigning a material to the pick head. But that you can search for pixel material and put it here. Then you can say that you want to use the material which uh, enables the colors. And then you can browse for any texture you like and apply it to there. Now we can also disable the color as we don't need it for the picket anymore. There you can see the textures are being rendered. We can do the same thing for example for the backdrop. We could choose a different color or a different texture here. I'm going for this stone floor texture and we can also disable the color here. We could also try to make use of the emission attribute. Um, by that we can, for example, on the pick head, we can highlight it and we could search for an attribute create. Let's rename that attribute and make sure this is a primitive attribute and rename it some, something like emit change the value to one. And now let's start by picking some of the primitives that you want maybe uh, emission to appear, maybe some parts of the ears that would be nice. Then we select this one, we'd enter and now we have this emission attribute here. We, but we also need to uh, tell the material that it should use this one. So in here we can type in emit and if we look back on the render, you can see these areas are now not receiving any shadows anymore or any lighting. But in order to push this even further, we can go to the Pulse Processing tab and on the effects, we can enable Glow. And now we can change the strength and the radius of the glow and 
uh, with that you can add emission by yourself. This also works with any em grayscale emission map that you assign to it if you have any. We could also add some more effects, for example, like the dithering, which is found under the light tab in dithering. If we enable that, both point lights and direction lights uh, will be dithered. And as you can see, this dithers the point light. We can also choose to blend in the original lights so that you can blend between the undithered and dithered shadows. You can also change how much dithering steps you want and how the dither layering should be. This is essentially eating into the layer. If you put it to one, you uh, create this kind of quantized look and at zero, it's fully, um, it's fully on there. You can also change the contrast, which is a pretty drastic effect. We could also add some ambient occlusion to it. And if you enable the ambient occlusion under the AO tab, uh, you can see that it is darkening some crevices and other areas as well. This is ray traced ambient occlusion, so you can change the sample count to get a more refined effect. Be careful to not increase the samples too much because it will impact your performance, but maybe 25 is good to get some more of it. You can also change the radius of it, that it only appears in smaller crevices. And you can change the strength to blend in and out the effect. Also, one of the things that you can do is you can change the style to overlay. And if you change the color to something like, in this example, red, then you can see the overlay will basically not multiply your image, but it will just plainly overlay it where the strength slider is a blend factor. If you change this back to multiply, then you can see it still gets some of the redness, but it's acting more like a multiply, so dark areas become uh, much darker and light areas will uh, only affect it a bit. We could also add some distance fork, for example, or some height fork. So by checking the distance fork in the post-processing volumetrics tab, you can start laying out the fork in your scene. It has a minimum and maximum distance. And if you if you push these, you can, you can set the uh, where the fork starts and where it ends. And with this distance ramp, you can decide how opaque it should be in certain areas and achieve quite some stylized results with it. You can also choose like the color profile along the distance profile. So you can add some varied colors into your scene. You can also turn on some height fork. This is really nice for some, uh, for some ground fork. It has also a slider for you to add some uh, noise on top of it, which is really nice for these fog, uh, fog layers. And in this one, you can also choose to have different colors at different stages of the height fog. Since this is also a screen-based effect, it won't add up in the distance, essentially. So be aware of that. Finally, we can switch over to the export tab if we're happy with our scene and we can change the resolution slider, which is really good for previewing. If you want to just preview a pixel art, put the resolution slider to maybe four, it will um, quadruple, in this case, your resolution. And since I only want to have a single frame, I can um, then click render color and normal, but first uh, let's name it, maybe the pick scene. It will save in the in this directory, which you can also choose by yourself. I choose to let it be the default. And then I can click render color and render normal. If we navigate to a folder, there should be a render folder. You should see both images have been rendered out. First, which is the color. Then you have the normal of the image. The package also includes a demo scene which uh, contains a bunch of examples for you to play around with and to test out different uh, solutions. So feel free to have a look at that one.